When it is said the kingdom of heaven is within you, I took it literally. How do I get there? You know, let's see what I do. And if it is true, what do I do to get there? And this technique just gave the answer. Instead of looking outside, which is also great. I mean, we want to be wealthy, we want to be happy, we want to have beautiful things. It's absolutely wonderful. It's nothing against this. But it's not going to give us what we're really looking for, ultimately, in life. And if this thing is somewhere within me, closest to me, then this technique says, close the eyes and let the mind go towards the inside. And then the mind itself does the job. So there is no forcing, no trying. It's a simple technique that allows the mind to settle down, settle down, and experience the self. And even from the time of Socrates and the Greeks and all of that, know thyself was written on, on the doors on Delphi when you go there for the oracle. One thing you have to do, know thyself. This was the greatest wisdom of all time. Where is our self? It's within us. So doesn't it deserve a few minutes, morning and evening, to go back to ourself, to go back to that infinity within us, and to know who we really are? What happens to the body and the brain when the mind settles down? Going back to the self is not something of the intellect, it's not something of the mind alone. It's a direct experience of who one is. And what happens with that is amazing. Because when the mind settles, the body settles, stresses go away. And this is why all the research that you are talking about and all the results, the good results on the individual level and on social level happen. What we call scientific is that which is systematic, so there is a system uh, which is reliable, so which means when you apply the system, you always get similar results. And repeatable, which means when you repeat it under different conditions, you still get the same result. What happens in the brain is what happens in the mind. You know, more and more we have found in science that the mind and the body are not two different things. They are an extension of one reality, which is our self. And when the mind settles, the body settles. When the mind starts to become quieter and quieter, the body settles down. Oxygen consumption reduces, muscle tension reduces, galvanic skin response on the skin reduces, the brain gets more coherent, there is more connection between right and left, front and back, and the whole physiology settles down. When the physiology settles down, it gains deep rest. This deep rest is what makes the stresses go out. So the stresses go out because the body is rested. You know, when you are running and you have all your day of activity and your muscles are tired, you just don't try to pull the, weak, the tiredness out of the muscle by some crazy mechanism. You know, what you do is you rest. When you rest, the body by itself removes the fatigue. It removes the tiredness. So the body itself has an internal mechanism that allows it to remove all these tensions and stresses that have accumulated throughout a lifetime by having strong impressions that remain with us, even though we forgot them on the surface level, but all these experiences that can be stressful, that can be damaging to the feeling, that can be hurtful, they remain in us. And that's what actually makes us age, that's what makes us, you know, lose neurons, uh, lose body uh, effectiveness and all of that is because of this accumulation of this wear and tear throughout the years. The body has a mechanism to remove the fatigue by itself and since the rest is much deeper than that of sleep, then the stresses that are removed are much, much deeper than what sleep can remove because sleep removes stresses to some extent. However, you wake up in the morning, you still have the same anxieties or feelings or depressions or fears, insecurities, etc. Why these are there? It's not the nature of the body and the mind to be like this. It's because it has been distorted by the stresses. So what you need is a deeper rest. 
and this deeper rest automatically will readjust the physiology. So what's different in this technique is that first it is not based on believing in it. It's not based on a philosophy as such, but a deep understanding, of course. And the technology itself is extremely simple. The children can do it and adults can do it, people of different races, different traditions, different belief systems, and they all get the same result. So that's why we call it a technology, and that's why we call it scientific. This is one thing which is different between this technique and others, though we don't like to compare, but every technique has its value. Uh, but most techniques of the mind try to manipulate. So think of your breathing, think of your environment. So what you're doing is you're asking the intellect, the mind, the intellect, to focus on something, to think of something, to do something, even though more settled and more quiet. In this technique, we don't ask the mind to focus or concentrate or anything. We just allow the mind to take its own course, which is a systematic course of going inwards and settling down. So this technique is neither hypnosis, nor psychiatry, nor nothing. We usually take an example, you know, if you have a honeybee buzzing around, and it'll be buzzing, and suddenly it gets quiet. When does it get quiet? when it finds the nectar, it's attracted and it settles down. The mind is like this, it's buzzing, searching. We're always searching for more, always. What is the nature of the mind? We ask ourselves, what is something we all want? We want more happiness, we want more love, we want more creativity, we want more knowledge, we want more wealth, we want more joy. This is the nature of the mind. We can't say it's not. You know, if you're reading a book and it's interesting but not so interesting and suddenly a music starts somewhere, you, without any effort, your mind jumps to the music. Your eyes as if are reading the book, but your mind is going for what is more pleasing. That is the nature of life, to go for more. And this technique has one simple paradigm, one simple equation. Go towards what is more than the most. Transcendental meditation has been shown to integrate front and back, right and left, and open up the reserves of the brain and create a more holistic experience that really allows the inner feeling to be a feeling of joy and happiness, while on the outside, it has shown that people are more productive, more creative. Because one of the things that happens, people think, okay, if I'm happy inside, why would I be then acting on the outside? Why would I be doing things? And what is interesting in this program is that it allows the mind to be really settled, to be established in oneself, to be anchored in one's own deep being, to be happy, and yet it motivates for greater achievement on the outside. So that's why it's one saying we use to say is 200% of life is what we want. We want 100% inner, but we also want 100% outer, and there is no contradiction. To the contrary, we can enjoy the outer much more when we are stable within, inside. Whereas the outer can own us and you know, make us its slave, if you like, uh, if we are not anchored in ourselves. So go back to yourself, know thyself, know that kingdom, that heavenly kingdom within, and all else will be added onto you. On the mind, we can say, is like an ocean, active on its surface, and more and more settled in its depths. A thought is like a bubble coming from the depths of the ocean because it's high pressure and very settled there, the bubble is very tiny, and that bubble goes up and becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. When it reaches the surface, we are aware, oh, this is a thought. But what is the origin of our creativity, of our thinking, of our planning? It comes from somewhere from within, and that is the depths of the ocean. But the mind is searching. Now give the mind that settled experience, that honey, <laughs> that nectar, and the mind settles down. So 
uh, it, we don't force the mind. It's a simple technique. By the way, I wanted to define just the term transcendental. To transcend means to go beyond. And when we said the mind is like an ocean, on the surface it's active and in its depth it's quiet, really what happens is as the mind settles down, settles down through this technique, it reaches the point where you have no thoughts, you have completely settled mind, and yet you are awake. This we call transcendental state. So beyond all activities of the mind, so you transcend actually even <laughs> the mind activity into the self, into that, that bottom of the ocean. And that happens completely naturally. So that's where the word transcendental comes from, to transcend, to go beyond. To go beyond what? To go beyond even the faintest impulse of thought to the level of pure pure consciousness. Now, if we can get there, we go to the source of all creativity, the source of all intelligence, and even to that state of pure being, which we said is a state of the self, pure being. Now, the problem is when you start going down into the ocean of the mind and it starts settling down, settling down, settling down, the tendency is to fall asleep. Because that's what happens when we settle down, we fall asleep. And when you fall asleep, you stop, therefore, at a certain level. Sleep is very rejuvenating. But deeper than that, you don't usually go. So there is a trick that we use. The trick is a sound which has no meaning. It's called a mantra. That's how these techniques are. You learn this specific sound. And the sound is not what makes it happen. The sound is just a vehicle on which the mind sits innocently and the mind dives guided by its own nature to want to go to the depths. So as the mind goes deeper and deeper and it settles down and settles down, there is this mantra that prevents it from falling asleep yet allows it to settle down. How do we use that? There is a technique, you have to learn it, there is a procedure and that's why we need a teacher who is being qualified and understands how to guide the individual. That's why it's a personal instruction. And this knowledge comes from a tradition which is thousands of years old and has been proven through the test of time. And we feel we have something precious that we want to offer, which allows the mind to clear up the system. Let us try to work on the immunity of the system, the strengths of the individual. So first, we anchor ourselves in ourself. We remove our stresses. We clean up our system from whatever it has that has been accumulated on it. Naturally, our defenses will be more, and the science has shown that the immune system is stronger, the hormonal system is more balanced, brain activity is more conducive to good behavior because it doesn't just change the physiology, it changes the behavior, it changes the decision-making process. We can also add, you know, even information overload is there. You know, look at us all, you know, you go, you open the internet, what's the news, what's happening? So we are saturated with this. Is there no time to clean it up a little bit, you know? And so this is what, just going back to the self is like, rebooting the system. You know, otherwise, the whole software is being manipulated. So even the information is becoming an overload today. And so we need, we need to go back to the self. There is no question. We need to go back, settle down, refresh, reboot the system, and start over with strong immunity and strong physiology and strong mind.